Now, into the woods, Whiteham Woods. It's a beautiful 390-hectare woodland outside Oxford, which has for the last 60 years been the site of tonnes of research into the natural world and animal behaviour. Scientists have been studying great tits, Paris Major, in Whiteham for decades. And in a paper published this week, they've revealed some fascinating behaviours to do with their mating strategies and their personalities. Yes, it turns out great tits have personalities. I asked lead researcher Katerina Johnson to explain how they assess the temperaments of birds. We catch the great tits from the wild and then we introduce them into a novel environment. And this is a room with five perches dotted around it and the birds are in it for eight minutes. And we record things like how often they spend flying, how many different areas of the room they explore, the number of times they hop um, and different factors like this. And then based on these observations, we can sort of statistically generate a score for each bird on the spectrum from bold to shy. So shy birds tend to be quite cautious, whereas bold birds are sort of much more interested in the new surroundings and keen to explore the room. What have you actually found in terms of the differences in personalities in great tits? We were interested in whether birds show a preference to associate with others of similar personality type to themselves. And we found that it was, in fact, the males that tended to nest near other males of similar personality. But we didn't find anything with the females. So that might be because sort of what's more important for females is sort of mate choice and the attractive qualities of the male. But with males, we think that this might be because, particularly during the breeding season, interactions are very aggressive. They're defending their territories and they're also competing for opportunities to mate with females. And so perhaps the shy males prefer to nest near other shy individuals to avoid aggressive interactions. But it may also be that if you're a bold bird, you might have advantages by nesting near other bold birds. For instance, collectively, perhaps you're better at defending your space and preventing intruders from coming in. And they do defend their territories more fiercely. So they vocalise more and they invest more energy in singing compared with the shy individuals. It's basically jocks and geeks, isn't it? <laughs> oh, well, I don't know. You could maybe describe it like that. It's absolutely fascinating result, this, and there many questions immediately spring to mind. But I suppose the first one is why do we see, or why do we think we see such diversity in personality in, in these birds? It's one of the big questions in the field, you know, understanding the evolution of personality. Why isn't there just one optimal personality type that's favoured by natural selection and generally does well under most conditions? So we know that how well a particular personality type does can be influenced by the ecological conditions. So generally bold birds, because they're risk takers, often tend to do better when food is in short supply. But on the other hand, shy birds that are more cautious and risk averse um, are likely favoured, for instance, if there are a high number of predators around. There doesn't seem to be any consistently strong selection for one behavioural type over the other. And so this is probably why it maintains diversity in personality traits across a population. This is in Whiteham Woods, beautiful Whiteham Woods outside Oxford. How do you know that the male birds are not just clustering according to specific environments that they might prefer? When we found this result, that similar personalities tended to associate with each other, we then thought of other factors that could contribute to this observed pattern. So the results could be explained if, for example, all bold birds tended to nest near each other, not because they were actually interested in the personality of their neighbours, but just perhaps because they all had a shared preference for a certain habitat, for example, in the woodland. We looked at whether particular personality types showed a preference to nest in certain nest boxes, and whether this was consistent over years. But we didn't find any evidence for this. So there was no sort of evidence that the local environmental conditions influenced where certain personalities chose to nest. OK, so they do, they do cluster together according to personality. Is it possible to associate this with human behaviour? Do we see similar sort of personality types clustering in people? 
well, humans have been shown to associate with those of similar attributes to ourselves. And this is a well-known phenomenon in human social networks called homophily. And we know that personality does play a role in influencing the structure of our social networks as well. And it was actually interesting because there was a study looking at humans and they found that we're actually more genetically similar to our friends than you would expect by chance. So the genetic similarity is sort of roughly equivalent to being fourth cousins. And so this is kind of interesting because it suggests that maybe subliminally there's something that makes us attracted to other people that are similar to ourselves, you know, whether that's personality or, or other factors as well. And, you know, just like humans and the fact that we show a preference to interact with certain individuals, their research in the last decade has really started to reveal that animals are also like this. Because before then, we used to treat sort of animal populations as just a randomly mixed group of individuals. But we know now that this isn't the case. And they also show preferences to interact with certain individuals over others. Katerina Johnson from Oxford University. Whiteham Woods, by the way, is the last resting place of the great Bill Hamilton, who came up with some of the most important ideas in evolutionary biology, including about why social networks work. 